Hello and welcome. This is the marketplace where we analyze the market. We talk about the trends emerging in businesses and investments and how global development impacts business activities in Ghana, including yours. On the program today, tax revenue as a percentage of GDP shoots up significantly as a result of recent tax reforms and Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIA has now admitted the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GNDP, did not overspend its 2015 budget. All these and more we give bringing you here on the marketplace. So you can also you can stay interactive with us on Twitter. Our handle is Joy Business GH. And on Facebook, it's Joy Business. For more, you can log on to myjoyonline.com slash business. My name is John Kojo Amwako. Marketplace returns after the break. Welcome back. And the Ghana Revenue Authority is attributing recent increases in the tax collection to reforms introduced over the years. Tax revenues as a percentage of GDP has shot up significantly by about 17%. This resulted in 25 billion Ghana cities tax revenue for last year. Managers of the economy over the years have been criticized for not doing enough to improve tax collections looking at the size of the economy. But Commissioner General of the Authority, George Blankson, tells Joy Business the prospects are good looking at progress made so far with collections. The establishment of the Reven Ghana Revenue Authority to replace the four independent or autonomous tax institutions that existed meant that we now have one authority which could track the activities of taxpayers right from the beginning to the end. When you take an importer of, a of raw material, for example, right from the port to the retail stage, you know how much in terms of the quantity of goods and therefore taxes due that the particular taxpayer that has imported the raw material must produce and therefore you are able to better predict or assess the taxes that are due. We also have introduced the taxpayer identification number which is a unique identification number which we use to identify all taxpayers throughout the production distribution chain. So whereas previously it was it was possible for a taxpayer to declare one set of figures at importation and another at, say, production and distribution. Now we have one taxpayer identification number which tracks the activities of taxpayers throughout the chain. And this has become more difficult to do. Tax revenue has shown strong improvement over the years of the reform. For instance, from a tax GDP, tax revenue GDP ratio of 12.9 or so in the year 2010, we have now reached close to 17 percent. That is total revenue as a ratio of the gross domestic product. We have now hit this high percentage. We should tell you that there has been tremendous improvement. Banks in the country risk being downgraded or giving a negative outlook on their credit ratings. That's the warning coming from ratings agency Moody's. Their concerns have been influenced by sudden jump in loans that banks fear might not be paid on time. But could this development increase the cost of borrowing in the country? George Afi has more in this report. The ratings agency in its latest report on Ghanaian banks say the increasing non-performing loans, which has hit a record high as of March this year, could cripple banks in the country and affect their ability to make some good profits and even credit extension. Moody's is even warning that because of the sharp growth in loans over the years, there's a likelihood that the record loan default rate could worsen in the coming months. According to Moody's, the challenge has come about because of the worsening economic environment, which has made it difficult for these loans to be paid back on time. The threat by Moody's could result in a possible review in the B3 negative outlook of the credit ratings of GCB. But Moody's has maintained that it does not expect the situation to worsen for GCB when it comes to its financial position. But whichever way you want to look at this, 
a downgrade or a negative outlook for banks in Ghana could result in the cost of credit for these commercial banks hitting the roof. A development that could lead to interest rate going up while some may have to cut lending to business. Um, Ghana Gas says it is currently supplying adequate gas to its major off-takers, the VRA, to support electricity supply. Gas supply from Nigeria by the West African Gas Pipeline Company was suspended barely two weeks ago as a result of what the company said was unpaid bills by the Ghana government to end gas. This has resulted in some inconsistencies in the supply of power in the country. Meantime, Ghana Gas says it is supplying gas regularly to mitigate any negative impact. Communications manager of Ghana Gas, Alfred Bami, has joined us on the line to actually give more perspective and tell us exactly what is happening. Mr. Bami, you're welcome to the marketplace. Well, thank you. Good. What is the current state of our gas supply in the country? Well, we are supplying what the nomination by the VRA in the light of the current challenge. As you would know, uh, the plant has a capacity process under the 50 million standard cubic of gas a day. Um, of course, before February, then we were processing 150 to 120 million staff. However, as a result of some slight challenge on the FDSO, uh, they were unable, they've been unable to then to give us that volume. Mm -hmm. What they've been giving us is just around 60, that is the uh, half of what he used to give. And based on that, we give the uh, necessary nomination by the VRA to them. That is it's always around 54 to 57. Okay. Um, let me however say that two days yesterday, we had VRA nominated that they'll be taking about 70 as of today. We are still waiting for them to begin the office. Mm. Okay. Now, how much are we looking at here? We're looking at 70, I mean, in terms of 70 million tonne activities of gas, that's what we're looking at giving them based on the, the nominations they've made. Mm. Or are you looking at, at it in terms of the uh, conversion to energy? Exactly, yeah. Well, um, in terms of conversion to energy, let me just calculate right now and get back to you. I'm okay, don't worry, but while we have to do the calculation, we can actually continue with that. But my, ne my, my next uh, immediate thing is... Megawatt. I'm, I'm sorry, ca can you repeat that for me, please? Now, if they are able to offtake the 70 m scarf, mm -hmm. it would lead to a generation of a minimum of 280 megawatts. Okay. okay. And that, that must be an improvement, I guess. Well, certainly, because, uh, as I said, they were taking 54, mm. uh, which was just about um, 216. So you would have to take the 216 from the 280, mm. and then you certainly get the increase that, that we are Okay, that, that, I think that's fair. Uh, now, let's look at it. I think some time back, you were having difficulties with supply from the FPSO. And now you're saying that at least um, you're able to supply or deliver to your, the, those who depend on you. Do we, I, I certainly saying that everything is okay with the FPS and for that matter, Ghanaian should go to sleep? I, not at all. In fact, if you listen to me earlier, as I said, uh, ever since the FPS had his own challenge in mm. February, they've been unable to give us more than half of what they used to give us. Okay. And uh, of course, uh, when they had a challenge somewhere February 10th or so and went off, we had nothing at all for like two months. Mm. I mean, we had nothing, zero gas. Yeah. But then there'd be an improvement in the sense that they are at least giving us something, not still up to what they were giving us before the challenge, but it's an improvement. They are at least giving us something. And that is leading to enhanced generation. Mm. We still know where we used to be before that challenge. Mm. And I think that Talo has made it quite clear that they're working on the existing challenges and they hope that they will come back on stream at the right time. What right time that will be, I don't know. Mm. All right. Um, let's, look at, let's look at, I'm just picking some signals from the ground that Ghana Gas has been supplying the, I mean, has been supplying LPG, which is used domestically, almost about 50%. How far is this true? Well, uh, 
a full operation, yes, um, we supply 50% of the national need every day or if you like yearly. Indeed, at the time we began operation, it was 75%. Mm. However, demand has gone high. Sorry, in cubic feet, uh, how, how would you quantify that? Um, Today, uh, sorry, I'm bothering with a lot of mathematics, but we need that so we can actually <laughs> appreciate exactly. Yeah. Well, that that is not actually in cubic feet. It's a metric ton. Okay. And uh, that was about 180,000 metric tons a year. All right. Mm. All right. That at the time, the na at the time that we started operation, the national demand was just about 240. Mm. So that worked out to about 75 percent of the national demand. And we're also picking from the ground also that apart from the LPG that you, you are supplying to for domestic consumption, there are other byproducts that are also coming up for your processing. How far is that true and um, how prepared is Ghana Gas to actually do that? Well, yes, any time we produce, what we take is the natural gas. Out of the natural gas, we get three major, we put three major uh, byproducts onto the market. The lean gas, which goes to the VRA. LPG for the domestic usage, and then a condensate, which is used for domestic and industrial purposes as well. Mm. All right, now can we can we talk a bit about um, who owes who and at what percentage what is coming? At a point, um, we had this confirmed. We was confirmed, and it was also public knowledge that Ghana owed. I'm, I'm putting Ghana general. I'm sure you understand me. Ghana owed uh, the Ghana gas some some amount of money for which your work was hampered. Can you tell us the status of that well, debt as we speak? Well, I wouldn't say Ghana owns Ghana gas. Because Ghana also owns Ghana gas itself. Okay. So there will be Ghana, Ghana owning, owning itself. Exactly. There might be some uh, reconciliation somewhere. Exactly. But the VRE, as an organization, certainly owes us over $300 million. Mm. Uh, as a result of um, lean gas we supply to them, and the for which payment is outstanding. Mm. Um, uh, as a result, we've certainly also not been able to pay uh, the GNPC uh, approximately eighty million dollars. Uh, that of of the wet gas that it was also supplied to us, uh, which was processed and also supplied onto the market. So it's it, it so, definitely affect, um, it used to affect your way. Is it affecting it now, maybe in 30 seconds? Oh, certainly. I mean, it, 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 it certainly has an impact on our work. It okay. has an impact on planning. It doesn't allow you to plan well because you don't have the resources. It affects your liquidity. Okay. Because if there's a crisis now, you don't have immediate resources to sort it out. Okay, and, Mr. Obama, Obama, we thank you. we thank you very much for your time here on the Marketplace. And the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, has now admitted the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GMPC, did not overspend a 2015 budget. PIAC Chairman Professor Paul Buabaswa had told Joy Business GMPC spent over $190 million in 2015 as compared with the budgetary allocation of a little over $126 million. The GMPC challenged this, insisting it's rather underspent. Alex Mould is a CEO of I mean, GMPC. It maybe have taken out of context because I think the report clearly stated that we... Um, the amount of revenue we earned versus the amount of expenditure, you know, we expend, we spend it more than we earned. But I don't think they actually said that we overspent because the budget for the spend was $292 million. And we actually only spent $190 million, which my calculation serves me right. It's 35% below what we budgeted to spend. So that respect is wrong. Also, if you look at our revenue, we had uh, expected a revenue based on the PRMA uh, um, calculations of 228 million, but the actual because of the drop in oil prices in 2015, we only we only received 127 million. So if you look at the amount we received, 127 million versus how much we spent, we spent more than we received. But it's not that we overspent because you look at the budget of how much you spent. So we received less uh, revenue, and we spent less than we were expected to spend on it. Usually for PIAC, when they compile these reports, they come for the information, some of it from the GMPC. So what is it down to? Wrong, wrong interpretation? Yes, I mean, we have had a meeting with PIAC recently in the last three months or so uh, to agree with them that after they ask us for information, we send it to them. 
it is, uh, it, it is only prudent for them to give us the final uh, a document for us to ensure that the correct numbers are in place. Uh, we have had no problems with PIAC with that respect, and they've agreed with us that it's the best thing to do. Okay. We are trying to actually get in touch with the boss of PIAC, um, Professor Boat Baswa, to also give us his perspective because he did actually come out with that particular statement, which has been um, underrun by this particular the CEO of uh, GNPC. So we'll be looking at that as and when we do get him. But meanwhile, the flag bearer of CPP, Ivor Green Street, has espoused the economic benefits of the almond fruit as a means of salvaging Ghana's economic woes. The fruit, according to the CPP presidential candidate, has lots of commercial value, which remains untapped for so long. He's convinced exploitation of the fruits here in Ghana will do the country a lot of economic and social good. He took his stand on the IEA presidential debate yesterday. Short growing period and a very good yield. The yield is approximately 3,550 kilograms per hectare. The price on the international market for almond oil is as much as 10,000 US dollars per ton. A rough estimate based on the above could potentially produce 30 million tons of oil multiplied by $10 per liter and Ghana's economy could potentially generate 300 billion US dollars. That cut that target in half, even more than half, and earning a hundred billion alone would clear the country's debts. Unemployment remains a daunting challenge across the country. Policymakers are grappling with a critical question of how to create jobs for the growing population in the labor market, especially the youth. Today on the Joy Business Van, Darrell Kwa will be engaging a 24-year-old who is in the business of helping young people create jobs. CEO of Orioles Group, John Armour, was recently named the Forbes 2016 list of 30 young under 30. Young, dynamic, resourceful, and visionary, John Armour is in the business of helping young people create jobs. As we speak, there are over 200 million young people who are unemployed. And in about 2030 to 2060, we're going to have over 600 million people unemployed. Currently, there are over 11 million entrants into the labor market each year in Africa. If you look at the global statistic, you have over 50% of Africa's population being youth. The challenges for unemployment are very clear. So for me, my passion is how can I help reduce unemployment? So my ultimate goal is where are the jobs in Ghana, in Africa, and how do we get young people the jobs in Africa? Does it mean they're starting their own or being skilled to start their own? We're taking a short break. Marketplace returns after the break.